Making pipes is something you'll find yourself doing all the time as a 3D artist. They're everywhere, and they add great detail to mechanical and sci-fi scenes. I've noticed, though, that some artists, well, a lot of artists actually, approach pipe modeling in a way that's maybe not the most efficient. So in this video, I'm going to show you a faster way. To model pipes, I start with a single vert. Then I extrude that vert into a network of edges that are the same shape as the pipe network that I'm trying to make. What do I mean by that? Well, basically just it's a set of edges or chains of vertices, one chain for each pipe, and each of those basically makes up the outline of what I would want the pipe to be, or not the outline, but rather the direction the pipe is going to go. Once I have the shape of my pipe network laid out, I grab all the vertices where there would be a bend in the pipe, and I use Control shift b to bevel the verts into smooth bends. Control shift b for those of you who don't know, uh, is bevel vertice, whereas Control b is bevel edge. Or if you have a face, well, it's still bevel edge. If you have a face selected, it bevels all the edges of that face. Uh, now you can use the pop-up menu to set the number of divisions in your bevel and your bevel profile. You can even make custom shapes here if you want. So if you want some kind of crazy looking corners, you can do that. Now that I have my corners, I want to give these pipes some thickness. So I'm going to pull up my search menu and use convert to curve. And the reason I'm going to do that is because now I can go into the curve geometry and use the bevel setting in the curves to thicken the pipes. Now, with curves, bevel does not mean the same thing as with beveling a mesh. When you're beveling a curve, basically what you're doing is you're giving a profile to the curve. You're giving it some thickness. Um, so now with my pipes at their desired thickness, I'm going to use the search menu again to convert them back into meshes. Now that I have meshes, I'm going to go and put some edge rings where I want there to be joints in the pipes. What do I mean by that? Well, pipes are rarely one single, un, you know, unbroken, extruded piece of plastic or metal. There are usually sections where the two pieces of pipe made up against each other. And uh, for making these, I'd also recommend you look for some references, but for me, I'm going to kind of just freehand it because I've done a ton of pipes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bevel those, and I'm going to extrude them out, and then I'll inset the result and extrude them back in slightly to make the gap where the two faces line up. So now I'm going to make a new collection, and I'm going to call it bolt, uh, or whatever you want, basically, and I'm going to make a bolt in it. And I can just make a nice, simple, low poly one. Or if I'm going to have the camera right up uh, against the pipes and I want more detail, um, I can go ahead and model a custom high poly one. Or uh, alternatively, you can use Bolt Factory, which is a very handy add-on that actually ships with Blender. You just have to go into the add-ons or if you're in 4.2 and higher extensions menu and enable it. Uh, so once you have that, you can add your bolt. And basically, you're going to want to set this up to fit through those new faces that you've made where the pipes flush up against each other. Uh, now that you have that in your collection, put it at the origin and disable your collection. So now I'm going to add a collection instance of the bolt that I've made, and I'm going to align it with one of the joints. Then I'm going to snap the cursor to the center of one of the edge rings so that I have a, a position that I can rotate around. And I'm going to use duplicate and rotate some number of degrees of my choosing with the transform set to 3D cursor so that the bolt is actually rotating around the 3D cursor, which we've centered on the joint. And then I'm going to use Shift R to repeat the action to get the number of bolts that I want. Now that I have my bolts for this joint, I'm going to grab all of them, duplicate them, and use cursor snapping to add that same set of bolts to all the rest of the joints. And then I'll go back and I'll add a little bit of random rotation to each of the bolts uh, with the transform set back to individual origins. And that'll just make it look, you know, imperfect and, and kind of go that extra step towards selling realism. You don't have to do it, but if you're looking for, you know, true realism, unless you have a really dedicated plumber, nobody's in there like lining up every single bolt perfectly. Uh, the great part about using collection instances is that any changes you make to the original that's in your hidden collection will be reflected in all the children. And before you guys come for me and tell me that Alt-D duplicates do the same thing, I know. But linked duplicates have one major drawback, and I kind of tend to avoid them in modeling for that reason. The reason I don't use linked duplicates in general, and I instead prefer collection instances, is linked duplicates do actually consume a little bit more memory than collection instances. Collection instances are true pointers directly back to the collection. They don't really consume any extra memory other than the empty they're being basically hosted on. Whereas the uh, linked duplicates do consume a little bit more memory, and with small stuff like this, it generally doesn't matter. But as your scene complexity tends to scale, it can really start to bog down your files, and it can even lead to you overrunning memory uh, in really complicated renders. And so it's sort of my habit now to just use collection instances for anything where I would use linked duplicates. There are definitely places where you'd want to use linked duplicates instead, but 
as a rule of thumb, if you're just making lots and lots of duplicates and you want them to be, you know, sharing detail, my personal preference has been to go with uh, collection instances instead. And yeah, that's it. That's basically how you make pipes in Blender, at least how I do. If you found this helpful, uh, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my next video. And remember, never stop learning.